Good evening and welcome to another episode of my anti-post angles. The next one was due to come out in the new year after we've had all of the Christmas festival grade one action but I just thought it was worth having a little sort of review in between although I might not be suggesting too much here. Um, my sort of trade of thoughts it's a period where it's going to get busy again after Christmas there'll be so much action going on um, you can sort of get a few vibes this time of year. There isn't anything I'm strong on. This is, wouldn't be a particular period where I'd be getting stuck in to try and pinch bits of value, but we'll go through some of the races. We'll see how we head up. Um, had some interaction with a chap called Shane on Twitter who was very kind about the last video that I put up. He's asked a couple of questions as well. So the first one was about the exchange. I obviously suggested with Bet365, given the fact they have a cash out option, that they're a really good bookmaker to be betting with. Obviously, with the exchange, you've got the option to back a horse at a price. You've got the option to then use your equity you've got from that original win bet um, to then lay the horse and you can sort of trade off of there but without getting into too much detail specifically about that now there isn't a great amount of liquidity in the Betfair exchange market um, that market tends to react a lot quicker than some of the bookmakers can so the good thing with bookmakers which they won't thank me for promoting is the fact that some bookmakers, you can watch a horse running, you can add them to a festival market on your bet slip, and if they're clear going to the line, you can back them before the bookmakers will shorten the price. Um, now, a couple of years ago, we had Lorena and Maria's Benefit that were both running on the same day. They both ran within about 10 minutes of each other. Um, obviously, Lorena did go in and end up winning, but I managed to get with a certain bookmaker um, both of the horses added to my slip. I managed to bet both of the horses after they'd won their race, and I managed to bet both of the horses at double figure prices. So I managed to put myself into a ridiculously good position all because of their slowness. Now, I know long term, and people will talk about, well, okay, well, if you're any good at punting, you'll get gubbed, you'll lose your accounts, all those sort of things. Again, it's a discussion for another day, but if you really want to get another account, you can get another account. Um, it depends on the sort of stakes and stuff you want to be putting on, but for, for my sort of anti-post punt, and I've, and I've touched on this sort of stuff before, I'll probably end up building a portfolio for the festival that will be probably up to £5,000 worth of stakes. Some years it can be lighter. It depends how much I need to pad and play when we get nearer the festival. Um, over the well, well over the last decades, the last 12 years, I've now had profit from anti-post punting. I've, I've dappled a bit on the exchanges, so some of my bets I have placed on the exchanges... Typically, I'll do that nearer the time of the festival. I know we won't be getting non-run or no bet on those markets, but you can get some really, really big prices on horses. Sort of ones that are maybe f like further under the radar. So the likes of Penhill, I backed in the Albert Bartlett a couple of years ago, or a few years ago now. Um, it, there was some form lines and all the sort of things that would suggest he was going to go Albert Bartlett. Um, I looked on the exchanges just to get an idea of the price, and he was a, a three-figure price, just way too big. Um, and obviously the bigger the price, the bigger the bet is the good old saying. But in my particular instance, I will just look at the fact that I might want to win a grand and I don't have to put as much on to do it. So again, we can go on that for quite a while, but I like betting with the bookmakers while they'll let me. If you need to get another account, just get another account. But the Bet365 cash out is handy because again, like we talked about, the, whole, the bookmakers reacting when a race goes off. Also, we can get the same thing when there's news of a horse. So for example, there was a talk of Malone Rhodes knocking his knee before... He'd, it was fully announced. Um, I was in some good positions on a few betting accounts. I did not cash all of them out because I still wanted to keep some positive position. But I did manage to cash out to cover all of my stakes in the event that he was pulled. And hey-ho, he was later on. So we can get some news and we can play with it. The exchanges, they tend to be up on board with it. So it's not as easy to lay out of a bet on exchanges as it is to bet on there. You don't always get the best prices. You know, the cash out offer ultimately can be invaluable um we've had news recently with saudi missing his, his christmas engagement now bet three's five suspended the cash out on him but there was a good two and a half hour three hour window between him not having any entries over christmas to the news of william williams coming out they had a setback um so you had that option there to you could slide for your stake you could you could cash out you could take the risk and i know they're not offering you 100 percent of the value for the cash out but this far out sometimes you know you make the decision whether you want to risk however much you've got on at whatever price you've got it on or whether you think, you know what, I could probably chop a bit of that out just for a bit of safety. So anywho, we're going to need to get on with some stuff on here because I'm aware that the visual would have been pretty poor for these first five minutes. 
What we're going to spin into straight away here is we're going to look at the anti-post punting, but we're going to be looking at the markets which are up for the short-term anti-post. So not for the festival specifically. There'll be lots of stuff in here for Cheltenham over the weekend. Obviously, with Odds Checker, the beauty is they tell you what's happened to the markets. You can go back through, you can track a horse um, and look at the times, the markets they've opened up at, all those sorts of things. So in this particular instance, we'll have a look at the cross country just to give you that visual side of it there. So Easy Sland, when we did the previous preview for Cheltenham, the November meeting, Darren and I talked about the fact that we would have really liked to see Easy Sland come over. Um, or was it October meeting with the cross country? Whichever meeting it was, previously he was entered up and he didn't come over. Now this is the sort of the finale for this um, discipline. So the French trainers do bring a lot of horses over. You can see in the market there that he is shortening up. There was some news that came out yesterday that he was going to run. A lot of this stuff with the short-term anti-post, you really need to be looking at the fact that is the horse being backed because it's fancied or is the horse coming out because there's been some positive news. So a bookmaker will price up a short-term anti-post market on the basis that they're not all going to run. They can be quite tight, some of them, but obviously they've all got their own mind. So odds checker comes to the fore there because you can look at real big price differentials when they first open up. But we can see here that although Easy Sland has been nibbled, 6 to 1, 13 to 2 with Coral with the biggest prices available um, a few days ago. And as I say, the news broke yesterday. So it's no surprise to see the sea of blue from the 10th downwards. Doesn't necessarily mean the horse is being hammered because it's going to win. It just means it's more than likely going to run. So as I say, you can drill down there. You can see all the price stuff. So it's a, a handy way of, of looking at things. And we're going to squeeze onto the, the Christmas action. Because when I, when I talked about the racing last time, there was still a lot of the... well. The main races hadn't really kicked off yet, so there was talking there about maybe Defi de Sur and Silas Emery. There were 14s and 16s respectively with Skybet. Maybe they were a couple of horses that were worth sticking in a block bet. That's obviously come out okay. Um, Dulcita was mentioned in there at 33s, given the fact that the Mark Ice was one of the pair of Mullins mares that was being talked about, but you could still get a big price about that. Um, a couple of dodgy ones that I put in for the Triumph, all those sort of things. But the ultimate thing to remember, which I said in the first video, was that you you obviously you can do whatever you want anyway, but the beauty of back in anti-post and the beauty of back in anti-post at bigger prices is that you can have a few pokes in there. Now, the other question that Shane had with the sort of bad each way races, they're bad for bookmakers. We're looking at short priced horses where you might have two places up for grabs and you could back something at a big price. The fields might even cut up so the each way terms wouldn't even be the same at the time. But realistically, those sorts of horses, you're looking at backing them because they're not they're probably not going to win. You're just looking for the place angle. We'll come on to that when we look at the Cheltenham Festival again. But for me, I'd rather back a handful of horses in a race than back each way, especially back in anti-post, given the risks that are involved, all those sorts of things. And especially if we're backing horses at good prices or we're getting some decent value about them, then I don't really see the edge in sneaking the extra place part of it. Occasionally, there'll be instances where you can have a serious each way bet just because the market's wrong or the place terms are but for the vast majority of my bets I will not back each way I'd rather just pair up on a couple so there's a few races that are going on over the weekend Friday Saturday we can see the international hurdle lots of stuff's been moved about in there there's some positive vibes that Elixir Donuts could be running um, he would have been a lot shorter price if there was sort of no grey area about that just interested to see some of these short ones. These aren't the particular races that I think are going to give us massive form lines into the festival. I know the International can be a good race. There can be some proper winners of that, but that would be more of a fat-finding mission. I wouldn't be looking at that to say Pentland Hills is a 6-4 to four short, less back Pentland Hills for the champion hurdle. You do have the option with these bigger priced runners in a major race at Cheltenham. I touched on it before about getaway Trump, that you could back him for the Arkle before he ran against um, our dancer for the second time at 25 to 1 and if he gets beat you'll be able to cash out for your stake that's exactly what happened he was nibbled in he got beat he's already a big price they're not going to push him out any further you could cash out for him so some of these horses in here that might be 33s 40s 50 to 1 for the champion hurdle if you fancy him to win on Saturday then obviously why not stick a bet on there it's almost risk free obviously it's not always but it's almost risk free because they're not going to push the price out you're guaranteed 95% of your cash out back with someone like bet365 so it's a safer way of playing if you backed on the exchanges at 50 to 1 or you might even get 100 to 1 if you then decided actually you know what, I want to chop my bet for 95% of it if the horse is not performing very well no one will want to back it anyway and if they did you'd have to be laying it at a bigger price so you won't get anywhere near as much money back so again I just want to look at the races that are going on for sort of bigger things. I touched on Elixir. The Nuts is probably going to be heading to 
Um, Cheltenham for the international. That would be exactly why El Dorado Allen here has been backed for the Ascot handicap. So the, both of them are going to be in there as a handicap runner. The fact that Alexis Dunitz probably isn't going to run in it, El Dorado Allen will be fancied. Given the fact that they reckon El Dorado Allen could be a champion hurdle horse, he would be the sort of horse, if we're looking for short-term anti-post, you want to be hoovering up that 14 to 1 available. If you bet with William Hill, you can get that boosted. You'll better get your price up to probably close to 15, 16 to 1. Corals and Labrooks are both there. They offer boosts as well. So that would be one of a market I'm looking at right now that he's going to go off single figures on the day. And it looks like that's where he's going to be going, given what's happened to other horses. Um, some other nice racing over the weekend. But again, I don't really see these as real big anti-post festival lines in. The Albert Bartlett Novice Hurdle is a race that I really like. It's a bit of a messy one for short-term anti-post. Kiltearley Briggs is a horse I really like. Probably wanted a bit more rain. But that'll be a cracking one to watch. And again, getting involved long-term anti-post for Cheltenham Festival and these types of races might not be the best advice. So a couple of years ago when Kilbrick and Storm won the Albert Bartlett, I tipped him up to win um, the race or this exact race, at Cheltenham in the December meeting. He duly obliged. He beat um, a Fergal O'Brien horse. I backed him that day at 25-1 to 1 for the Albert Bartlett. He was available at 50-1 to 1 on the day. So there are types of horses that you can take a pump with long-term. There's other ones that you can't. So something like this as a particular trial for Cheltenham, you wouldn't say that this would be a real, real standout one. Um, I know we've had other horses that run well in it and, and it can move the market a little bit, but you just want to be a little bit cautious about which ones you want to get involved with. It's difficult for me to sort of put a real generalisation on these are the races you, you do want to back before and these are the races you don't, but you want to really be looking for the top grade stuff. You want to look historically how those lines have fed into Cheltenham um, and ultimately it just comes with experience. So the more you get involved with this, the more you'll learn. Of course, you're going to make some mistakes, which anti-post punting will cost you a few quid so if you're getting stuck into this early on you just need to start off with small takes small stakes it doesn't take a lot to build up a decent sized bet on something so paisley park at the beginning of the season was five to one with william hill um and that was after the festival so it wasn't any sort of special or anything like that you could boost that up you could get 11 to 2 so if you now look at the fact before paisley park had even raced it was a two to one shot and you could have got 11 to 2 at the start of the season you've got the whole of the summer to back it a couple of quid on a few weeks of doing that 10 weeks down the line, all of a sudden, you've got £130 for a £20 liability. If you put the same stake on now for the same liability, you'd be winning half as much. So, you know, it's just those sorts of things. Don't feel like you've got to be putting loads of money on your post. You want to build them. Um, and if you fancy a horse at some point, if you've seen something about them ability-wise that makes you think they're going to go and win a big race, that shouldn't change completely after they've let it down after. So... If you at any point you fancy your horse to win a, win a race at Cheltenham, as long as you're confident on it and all, all those sorts of things, and if you stick some money on it and it does turn out that it runs poor after, then you've still got that bet slip for the festival. You've still got a chance, and there was still something about that horse that you like at a time that, you know, if you were just picking up the paper on the day of the races, you might not look at those. You might overlook it and say, oh, it's let it down since. So it's, it's nice to get quite a few on board. Um, we're going to move further on to sort of the bigger races. So we've got things like the Marsh Hurdle, we've got Paisley Park, if the cap fits. This will crack, looks like he's probably going to be coming and running here now. Um, I think they're going to go down the stairs hurdle route with him. There was talk about that anyway. Um, he'd be one that, you know, got six pounds from Paisley, couldn't do it. If the cap fits would be one that potentially could put it up to Paisley, given he's so good around that track. Um, it's tricky. I'd rather be looking at the fact that if, if the cap fits is two to, or, yeah, two to one to beat, uh, or three to one to beat, Paisley Park in this race, um, you could probably get about 10 to 1 for him to win the stairs hurdle. I'd be tempted if I fancied if the cap fits to beat him at Ascot that he's going to go and do him at Cheltenham. I'd be looking to back him as an anti post punt there. If he runs well in defeat, his price might shorten, it might stay the same. If he does beat him, his price will obviously crumble. Um, at Paisley Park will be pushed out a little bit where his sort of fans will want to get back involved with him probably, but you wouldn't particularly see the value in backing if the cap fits to beat him in this race. Now, I will caveat that with the fact that if the cap fits runs Ascot well and we don't know how he will handle Cheltenham, and I don't think he'll run it that well. So, obviously, for the short term, getting the glory of backing it, you know, you've done well. But there's 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 potentially, for, for bets like that, unless you really strong on him to win the race, if you just sort of half fancy him and think he could do it, you might be better placed to put an anti post punt on. Again, it's all up to you what you want to do. That it, I wouldn't be getting involved in that. I wouldn't be doing what I've just said there, that you could be backing in for the stairs. But it's the sort of trail of thought that you need to be thinking about. Um, 
So we've touched on this bet for exchange trade. You can see Elixir, the Nuts' price is coming out. You can see Eldorado is being backed. That is one to get stuck into. Well, I say stuck into. All with the calmest of voice I'm saying this with. That would be one that I would suggest is worth having a play on. No guarantee it's going to run all those sort of things. So the whole point of doing these short-term ones, I've waffled for long enough on those, is the, the grade one action. So we've got the Christmas hurdle. Benny Deji should be running in there. Um, there's murmurs now that Honeysuckle could be racing again that time of year if the cat fits is in the market, but, I mean, he's not going to be going there. Realistically, looking at that from a betting premium, I mean, Benny Deji should be winning it. Benny Deji is about the same sort of price for the mayor's hurdle. I wouldn't be suggesting getting stuck in on Benny Deji or any of these Christmas grade ones, but you'd think that Benny Deji would be the one that goes there. Bacardis, which wasn't very good the last day. Um, you know, Willie Mullins will probably send a couple in there. It's likely that Apple's Jade will probably run. Um, they'll try something different with her. But, you know, when you're looking down the line of it, you have to start to think, a couple of years ago, Papal ran a big race at a big price. Is there anything of that type in here? And, and there really, really isn't. Um, so, yeah, Benny Deji would be one that you'd be interested in there. Um, until she faces Honeysuckle, I don't know how much short she's going to get. Given the fact that that race lacks depth, don't really know what difference it would make to her anti-post betting at Cheltenham. So she would be one that, at that sort of price... You, if you fancy her for the race, you'd back her for that. You wouldn't be interested in anything for the festival because even if she goes and bolts up there, what, what is she really beating? Um, she's only going to cement her place at the head of the market and move by a, a tiny amount. So the extra value you'd get by backing her to win this race, if you wanted to play all of the winnings up, you'd end up with a better price than just backing her anti-post in the first place, if that makes sense. Um, the Matchbook Exchange Novices Chase. So there's been some money recently for Sam Crow. Um, Betfair Paddy Power, the ones that are priced up, so... The movements in the market, you know, take them all with a pinch of salt. It could potentially be a nice race, but we just don't know who's going to turn up. I wouldn't want to be taking even money or odds on about a horse that's just fallen on his last start. Um, the King George Chase is always one that moves about quite a bit. Um, I did mention about Footpad, 25 to 1 at the time that I mentioned. Um, he's shortened up now. It, all the vibes are suggesting that he is going to come over. He'll probably want it more, more rain. Um, anything soft or slow is where he really does excel. Wouldn't be particularly a race that I'd be wanting to get stuck into. And again, the reason Native River's been backed is because of recent news that's come out that he might be supplemented. Um, if we're looking at the Paddy Rewards Club chase, all the word is that Chacun Poussois is going to be there. He worked at the race course the other day, so you know he's there to go at it. You, you wouldn't fancy too many of Willie Mullins' horses going in to take him on in there. Um, again, do you want to be getting stuck in at four to six? No. Um, if he does go and bolt up in there, will he shorten for a champion chase? Probably a little bit, but you need to remember again that this is around the time that Nicky Henderson is going to be making a decision on what Altior does. So, I don't know. I think people that are involved in Chacon Poissois should have been stuck in by now, and if they're not, then you'd probably, you're probably best just to sit and watch how that race goes. He is fragile. He's only raced a couple of times, given his age. Not the profile you want to be backing him at the price he is now. Um, the future champions, novice hurdle. Um, this is probably a, a good point to bring in the fact that on my website, cheltmental well, chelt-mental.co.uk, um, I've put a PDF together of the Grade 1 action and sort of form lines into the festival, and there's a few little trends in there to help you out with who might win it. Now, the form for the festival point is that some of these races are really good pointers to the festival. Some of these races are, are not so good, and some of these races actually probably send the horse in a different direction than what you'd expect. So it's worth consulting those when you're looking at anything, because again, if you fancy a horse for a certain race, you might end up looking at the potential festival target for it and see some ridiculous value. So a, an example a, quite a while back um, was Long Dog. Um, he drifted out the day that he won on slow ground, there was excuses that he probably didn't really want it that slow. I think he went off a 9-4 to four shot. Before that, it was odds on. He looked like a really nice horse. Um, he was 40-1, to one, I think, for the Ballymore. And that was even after he'd won the, the Grade 1, um, where he went off 9-4. to four. Now, the reason I'm bringing that sort of thing up is he was odds on favourite for his race before. He was unbeaten. There was just lots of things that were going on with him um, that suggested that he could be quite a good horse. And then you look at the prices he was for these sort of festival or Christmassy time races 
Um, it wasn't really one you'd want to potentially get too stuck into, especially when they're saying ground might be going against him, it might not be suitable for him, but you can take a punt back in him anti-post at Cheltenham when they are a massive price. We've seen there when we've looked at some of these horses, Benny Dejer is around about it was is seven to four, um, and she's about that price for the festival. You look at Chacon Poussois, who's a four to six shot, then he's about four or five to one for the festival. You could end up within these novice hurdles, you could get a two to one, a six to four favourite that is forty to one or thirty-three to one for a, a Cheltenham target. So if you fancy him for these races, you're probably better to take the risk on an anti-post punt, because as I say, if they get beaten, they're a big price, you can still get yourself out of it. Obviously, if they win and they shorten, you're in a great position. So we're not really sure who's going to be running in there, but there's loads of decent entries. Um, Paddy Power Chase will be really interesting. Um, a horse I've got on my ones to watch list, one for the road, Tom, who could run this weekend, could be out. It just looks a, a fairly steady race, but again, you're more you the only, the only thing you're really going to gauge from looking at the markets, not necessarily on a frequent basis, but you might want to have a little skim each day, is just the horses that are maybe being nibbled. And sometimes it can be market correction where a bookie's just overpriced them. Other times it can be genuine support. And it will all stem from something. Someone would have said publicly that a horse is going there or it's working well. Or one of the shorter priced horses isn't going there. Um, so we'll just skim through some more of the old Christmas ones. Uh, Welsh Grand Nationals we're coming up to you now. Savile Chase will be... Be a hell of a race, won't it? it? To all intents and purposes, it looks like that's where Ken Boy is going to start out. Um, likes it around there. You'd be surprised if he was going to get beat. Um, the, you, you wouldn't really know what way to play it with him. Back him to win that because he's already short enough for a gold cup, maybe. But then is there any value in his price or is there something each way? Hard to say. Um, the Neville Hotel's Novices Chase. This could be an absolute cracker of a race. Um, there's some really nice names in there. We'll just again, we'll have to see who looks like they might be going there. What they're priced up for for the festival is where your your lines sort of might come in. And again, if you fancy, even if you fancy one at a bigger price to run well in there, you can look at them as an anti-post perspective as well. The um, December hurdle will be an interesting one because Classical Dream obviously was beaten on his seasonal reappearance, his first race in open company. He's short enough here for this race. You would expect him to go and win uh, with a few sort of bad things happening for the champion hurdle contenders. He's put himself back to the fore of the market there. Um, I don't know. I think people would have been involved in Classical Dream before now. You wouldn't want to be getting stuck into him at 5-4. to four. You wouldn't want to be getting stuck into him around about 7-2 to two for the champion hurdle. I think the people that would have liked him would already be on. These are the sorts of races where I know it had been mentioned quite a lot recently, but Kurt Sublime, they thought a lot of him. He was a big prize for the champion hurdle. If he's second favourite for this race, and for any reason Classical Dream didn't run, and then Kurt Sublime did go and win this race, it's a good form line into some festival races. He could be one at a big price that could go well. It would just depend on what sort of things happen here, but when you're looking outside of those, I don't think any of them are really going to be anything for a bet in that race or for after. And then obviously we're on to the Grand National, which is way too far down the line. So... We're just going to quickly skim through the festival stuff because I want to keep this to a 30-minute video. Um, there's, there was a couple of markets that we talked about that, you know, Champion Hurdle could get a good shake-up. Just, I just promise, just have a look through that PDF that I've done where you could see the races over Christmas. You can see the sort of races at Cheltenham that they've gone for because some of these races aren't really worth looking at in terms of form lines. Some of them that aren't the grade ones might be things that go in there. Um, we'll just quickly peek into the Arkle market because I don't really think we've seen um, anything really that special in terms of an Arkle winner so far. I think it's still open. I think there could still be some some juice in the market. Um, one that is interesting, um, Precious Cargo for Nicky Henderson. Um, he was entered in a handicap ch novices chase. Bit of a, not a strange one. You just think maybe they're going to go there to pick up a win because he was off a fair enough mark. Um, you can see he's as low as 14 to 1 in places. He's 25 to 1. He's top price with Bet Freeze. It's 5. You've got the cash out the option. He has got plenty of entry, so he'll be out soon enough. Depending on what sort of competition he goes up against, it wouldn't take much for a half decent performance for him at 2 miles to put him probably low teens or even single figures. Obviously, Angel Breath was really impressive, but I guess the suggestion from the markets, especially in here, is that he would probably prefer to be stepped up in trip. So if we do skim down to the JLT market, and we can have a look at what's sort of going on in there, we'll see that Sam Crow, he's, he's gone out a bit, given the fact that they're talking about stepping up in trip. That doesn't mean he'll end up in an RSA, it just means that's where they're thinking of trying. You can see Champ's fairly short enough. We all think he's going to go RSA, I'm pretty sure he will. 
Yeah, but you can see why he's the price he is because if he did divert that way. Um, and then the one obviously I've just mentioned is Angel's Breath. So we can see that he's shorter for this than he is for the for the Arkle. You'd think that he'd want a little bit further. So you'd probably also think that Nicky Henderson's got something else in mind for an Arkle, which is where I think that precious cargo looks a nice enough horse. 25s is fair enough. And he's actually 28s on the machine. So you wouldn't be getting much extra value out of it. Just a lot of wobbly stuff in there in terms of the bigger priced horses. But yeah, we'll just have to see what horses come out, what things do. Um, and we're going back to the RSA market, given the uncertainty around Sam Crow. This is a really interesting one because Champ was short favourite for it, long time out. When Lorendo's been about the same price, long time out. Battle over Doyne's the one that lots of people have latched onto at bigger prices, but I, I, I just don't feel it as much as others. You can see Bet365 have gone short on Sam Crow. Now, again, it's the cash out vibe for this. People that might want to back him in a couple of races to cover themselves. That's ridiculously short for Bet365 because typically they will be there or thereabouts with top price. Um, again, it's the cash out angle of it. They've obviously got an algorithm that puts those sort of things into place. So don't just look at that and think Bet365 know that's where he's going to go. Just know that they talk about stepping up in trip. That might work. That might make him into an RSA contender. But we'll, we'll just have to see on that. But of course, I talk about Bet365 a lot because of the fact that they have got the cash out option. If the values, if they're that price and you want to back Sam Crow for an RSA, just take top price somewhere else. Just forget the fact you can't cash out. Just It's not worth the safety of the cash out to be backing it at such a short price with the, the other bookie. Um, there'll be some other bits and pieces that will come up. There'll be National Hunt Chase talk. That tends to come out in the new year as well. So that'll be something that I'll cover on the next one. Um, there's been some nice performances from some other horses, so you can see the, the prices have shortened up on things. The two that I mentioned at the top of the show, and I mentioned in the last one about the champion chase market, was Silas Emery with Skybet, um, and of course Deffy. They were 14s and 16s respectively, they're now 4s and 7s, so I talked about putting them in a block bet. I have backed um, Altior for the champion chase, I have got some money on Chacon Poussoir, just trying to put myself in a good position to be honest. I know you can't back every horse in every race, but value is value at the end of the day. Um, cross country market could shake up a little bit, uh, given the fact that Yamworth's running. But I mean, let's be honest. Tiger Roll is the pivotal piece of this puzzle. Yanworth six to one top price bet three six five. If he goes and wins at Cheltenham, what's he going to be three to one shot? Your cash out's going to go up a little bit, but you ain't going to be making a load of money out of it. And ultimately, it all hinges on whether Tiger Roll turns up. But you can see why he's been nibbled again. He's going to run this weekend in all likelihood. You can see people are obviously trying to look to get some cover outside Tiger Roll. I mean, nothing's going to be winning the, 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 the cross country. Yamworth has got that bit of class about him and that sort of air that, you know, Ender Bulger, all those sorts of things could make into a nice horse uh, for this discipline. Ran well enough the last day over bank. So you can see that. It would be one, if you fancy Yamworth this weekend, I would suggest getting some money on him for the for the festival because he doesn't he'd have to be really 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 poor for them to move his price out but you know a, a slight angle in there maybe wouldn't be for me at the price but I might not be saying that come March when I want some cover on Tiger Roll although to be fair I'm not really into Tiger Roll this year and um, there was a couple that came out for the champion bumper recently we had Fernie Hollow that I suggested at 25s or 20s is shortened up and wide receiver um, each wide receiver shortened up in enough places, he's actually really short with Bet365. Again, the cash outside of things. Um, try not to read too much of this stuff, but Betfair obviously got him 20s. They're Gordon Elliott's sponsor. And there was a comment that came out recently that they're going to mind him for hurdles. Seems a bit backward. And I think they struggled to keep weight on when they tried to intensely drain him. So, you know, you can get a bit of value, but sometimes they've still got to run, haven't they? Um, I think that's probably enough for this particular episode because, like I say, there isn't really too much that I'd want to get stuck into. I think Eldorado Allen for that handicap chase, as I've touched on there, 14 is absurd. You'll get a boost with Labrooks or um, or Hills, so I'd look at that. Um, Dulcita that I mentioned at the start, Lamarck Ice, they're now sort of both joint-ish favourites. Obviously, Gushin was good in the Triumph. He's still reasonable price on him. And we can see here that Katili Briggs is 5-1 to one to win the Albert Bartlett as a top price. But it's only with a handful of bookmakers, so try not to read too much into that. But he's 11-2 to 2 to win the Albert Bartlett Novices trial this weekend. 
I mean, I know where I'd want to be sticking my money. In a competitive Albert Bartlett that he's still got to make it to the festival, all those sorts of things, at 5-1. to one. Or would I rather have 11-2 to two for him to win this weekend? Maybe there's a little bit of a hint in there for a few of you, and I've backed him myself. So, that's it for this one. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for all your feedback, guys. And I'll see you in the new year.